I'm Professor Sharon Robinson from the University of Wollongong and with my co-author Dr Melinda Waterman I'm going to tell you about a paper that's just been published in Nature Climate Change. West Antarctica and the Antarctic Peninsula are among the most rapidly warming places on the planet. As ice retreats plants have expanded into previously ice-filled valleys. However, East Antarctica has not yet experienced much climate warming and so we didn't expect much change in its vegetation until now. In our paper, published in Nature Climate Change, we show that even here, plants are being affected by climate change. When you go to Antarctica, you expect to see icy white landscapes and the blue of the sky and the sea but in some areas there are lush green moss beds which emerge from under the snow for a brief summer growing season of maybe six weeks. Mosses thrive where there's enough summer meltwater flows in streams and lakes to allow them to photosynthesize and grow. We have been monitoring vegetation near Casey Station in East Antarctica since 2000. When we first went to Casey, the moss beds were frequently inundated with meltwater for most of the summer but over the decade to 2013, we could see that the moss beds were becoming drier. The Antarctic moss species that could tolerate submergence dominated the communities in 2000, but by 2013, two other species had moved in as the moss beds became drier. These species aren't keen on submergence, so they had previously been kept out by all the water. In addition to the species changing, all the mosses show evidence of stress. When we started monitoring, most of the mosses were green and healthy, but over the 10 years they became redder as they produced compounds to protect themselves from the drier conditions. If conditions get really stressful, the plants turn from green to red to gray. Like in these dry, dying moss beds near Davis Station in East Antarctica. By dating the mosses, we can tell that these plants have been growing here for hundreds of years. As they grow, mosses preserve a signature of how dry or wet the environment is along their shoots. So these mosses are like mini ice cores, preserving a record of Antarctic coastal climate over the centuries. From this, we can tell that most of the mosses are growing in drier conditions now than in the 1960s. Weather records are short in Antarctica, but suggest that the summers at Casey have got colder and windier since the 1980s. Colder, windier summers would reduce ice melt and increase aridity, making this region of Antarctica more of a desert than it was before. These changes result from both global warming and ozone depletion. We have shown that rapid vegetation change is occurring in East Antarctica and that mosses are sentinels of a changing coastal climate. We have also developed new methods that could be applied to track plant response to climate change around Antarctica. Our work shows that even Antarctica feels the impacts of global warming and illustrates the importance of international action to combat greenhouse gas emissions. The Montreal Protocol, signed more than 30 years ago, is a great example of international cooperation for a beneficial outcome. It has slowed ozone depletion, reduced climate warming and illustrates how positive change happens when we act together. <laughs>